Last game we saw dig in today, the first one of the day, they had a comeback victory. We'll see if that momentum stays with them now. Yeah, absolutely. You can see the Doran's Doran start by the supports. Both of these guys looking to get fairly aggressive. I know Crepo was probably the first support I saw with the 2014 season changes to just swear off the gold per 10 item start of the game, uh, especially because of how aggressive he's going to want to get early on on Leona. Knowing that Kiwi Kid and I'm a Cutie Pie play that Jinx Annie like a kill lane, a squishy kill lane that can be counterattacked, yeah. which is why it's quite important that Crepo builds defensive. Indeed, the Doran's Ring is going to give them that good amount of attack that they want, and everybody starts off safety potions as they would. So we see the line of scrimmage being created by both teams. The human sentries are out. And, uh, I haven't like seen I, this before. And I haven't seen this ever. Like I said, though, in our first game, really, Fnatic was the only yeah. one here in 4.1 that's done an invade. And also on the previous patch, we did see EG do an invade and get a kill with Thresh, right. actually multiple kills. Uh, theory number two that I think teams are going to start doing yeah. eventually. Uh, Kobe touched on it a bit in the previous game, how everyone just kind of waits in these lines mm -hmm. and then generally wards early on. And then since they're very short duration wards, by the time the junglers get double buffs, um, they go and gank a lane. I think teams are going to start to delay their trinket placements at the start of the game since almost all the junglers will be in the habit of clearing double buffs anyway. That way they can actually spot the double buff jungler right. with their trinket ward when said gank happens. But for now, uh, these players are still kind of set in their ways and they like having the early vision to know where rotations happen. Like, like these, for instance. If you waited for the trinket wards, they may not know to counter invade. Right. So we do have the late ones, very nice. And we also have, again, the sweeper on the Kiwi Kid, which was really a, a catalyst for Crumbs to repeat that lane. Yeah, the very early sweeper, I almost never agree with that as a choice because generally supports just bring the extra wards. But yeah. in this matchup specifically, since no one actually bought a real ward, a non-trinketed ward, it will effectively sweep out some substantial vision. And that is, that means now that EG is blind in the top lane since that one sweeper ward mm -hmm. was taken out up there. We'll see what matchup they get. Obviously, it's going to be against Inox, and he should fare quite well in the 2v1 situation. And we always know Mundo does too, so we'll come back to those lanes. And speaking of 2v1s, this is a really interesting wrinkle. As almost everyone may yeah. know, the turrets that are in the mid lane and the top lane now have a super Doran shield of sorts and 20 armor or basic attack, sorry, 20 damage reduction. Reduction, flat. yep. But what's happened here is the fast-pushing team with Jinx, who was the best turret killing AD carry early game, is going against the strong turret because they wanted to dodge the very slow-pushing Leona and Ezreal in the bottom lane. Now, what's actually going to happen off of yeah. this, I think, is even when you get some defenders, these turrets actually might fall very close to each other as far as damage goes, just since Jinx and Elise, especially being a ranged jungler, can kill turrets so much faster. And they time this perfectly. They have the siege wave there. It's going to give them a little extra mirrored on the bottom lane. But this turret, as we said, should fall a little faster. Dignitas is eyeing this turret. And it looks like they're actually going to grab it sub four minutes. Yeah, and normally you'd think, hey, the counterplay is to just push the bottom lane faster, but they can't anymore. The turret's gone. The second turret doesn't actually have the damage reduction, wow. and if they want to keep doing this turret push, they're completely free to. And EG is trying to follow up on this as well. Quaz has not even gone to lane. We know him for just hanging out in the jungle during this. Yeah. Or a cruiser, sorry. Yeah, both of the top laners don't want to deal with three yeah. people, so they've turned into junglers. they kind of done a little swap. Mm -hmm. I just really want to point out, you see how much slower those champions are attacking <laughs> when compared to I'm a Cutie Pie, who gets attack speed from his minigun, and then Elise, who gets attack speed from her frenzied W. So we could see how happy he was about Jinx during the interview. He almost couldn't speak. He's like, "You, you get that excitement. You take down turrets so fast. You're a turret takedown person." And he's the, doing uh, it right now. That was now. the I'm a Cutie Pie excitement right here. <laughs> and this is a very early dragon. Uh, you can see 125 wow. gold per person which actually doesn't factor into much more than the turret. Right. I, I definitely think that the two turrets Such a fast -paced game. are better at mm -hmm. this point. You mm -hmm. only got 625 gold for the dragon. You get more global gold as long uh, combined with a local gold from the top turret. And Dignitas has outplayed this early game. I don't think EG would have expected a 2v1 just turret rush in the top lane, right. especially with the 4.1 turret changes. Just goes to show you that's why you have to play the games. That's what you got to do is take your enemy off guard and put them on their heels. Right now, it's going to be 
Uh, the inhibitor turret taking quite a bit of damage. Like you said, these extra turrets don't have that following armor, and these are going to go down fast. A 400 gold lead coming up in inhibitor turret at half, which wow. they do heal now, so it's yeah. going back up. And Inox has some of the worst wave clear of a top lane champion you can have early on in the game. Uh, that's one of the reasons the push was going to be so successful. Cruiser has slightly better, uh, I think, at least CSing early on in the game from range. And obviously because the dragon was taken by evil geniuses, mm -hmm. Cruiser also has the farm advantage. This early game, strategically, has been substantially better by Dignitas. Really focusing to make sure these lanes have been won. They knew exactly what they wanted to do for those first few minutes and see if they actually had something in mind for the follow-up. Because they made it pretty far in that push. Where can they mm. go now? I know. Now, I think they just turned their sights uh, right back to people who aren't Leon and Ezreal. <laughs> I think I'm a cutie pie and okay. Kiwi Kid are a little bit scared of the potential aggression from Krepo. You can see Krepo's going all in right now. He already has a health crystal. He wants to fight the Jinx and the Annie. It's just a matter of Dignitas avoiding it. And there is so much roam going on. We can see Yellow Pete being left alone in the bottom lane. Krepo trying to advance and make something happen in mid. EG is scrambling right now a little. Yeah, EG is a little bit out of sorts. I think it really caught them off guard. Yeah. yeah two of their up... Uh, top lane turrets were taken down so quickly and now they might uh, get caught off guard by the roaming Kiwi Kid Annie support. That's something that was extremely effective for Dignitas in their win earlier against Coast and we'll see if they can do it again. He doesn't look that dangerous, just kind of hopping through the jungle. Looks kind of cute. Yeah. We'll like see a... him now throw a fiery bear on your face as he goes in, looks for Krepo. No, they Needs a few not. levels before the fiery bear. Why? Yeah, right now it's hope just paltry it. fireballs. It could be a tiny fiery that bear. That don't even stun for that long. No, not Come anymore. On. Yeah. Get her leveled. Let's go. Four people now in the bottom lane. Cruiser's probably going back up to try and defend that top turret to not trade them back. And since Dignitas has the numbers advantage here, they feel safe sieging. Notice that it is three melee champions against one... Or sorry, three range champions mm -hmm. against one range champion and two melee champions on EG's side, which means the turret sieging and the pushing potential of Dignitas is much higher. And it's causing Pobelter to roam down a little bit, now returning to mid lane, a seven versus a six. They're even in CS there, so it's only grabbed a little bit by Skara. Yeah. It's been a strange mid lane for those guys. They've just kind of watched the side turrets fall, and they've seen where the jungler is this entire time, so they're the only ones that have had a completely standard laning phase. Uh, Surprisingly, neither of them have shopped. You almost always see a Zed and a yeah, wow, uh, J and a Ziggs shop early on in the game, just so they can either assassinate or avoid getting assassinated by one another. I think just the fact there's been so much roaming, they do not want to leave their turret undefended, lest it be pushed by three people and dropped. Many things to think about for these guys. You can see Skara. Almost on his last leg there of HP, but he has the blue buff to keep himself clearing those waves in middle. Bull Belter has been doing a very nice job of actually being able to push back a Ziggs. It's kind of a hard task to do. Yeah, I think he's been doing quite well. The Dorn Shield is the defensive mm -hmm. Zed start to try and combat the auto attack harass of Skara. I think mainly it's just been a, a trade lane. You can see that Skara is actually going a little bit offensive against Poe Belter. The regular Ziggs build that I see against Zeds is Doran's Ring, second Doran's Ring, and a tear into a Seeker's Arm Guard. Um, and the fact that Scars went straight for a Blasting Wand makes me think he's not going for the armor itemization, mm -hmm. which makes him very vulnerable if Poe Belter can successfully all in him. See, that could be coming up very soon here. We saw a lot of movement from the teams just a few minutes ago. We'll have to see how the rest of the matchups go. We look now that Inox and Cruiser are faced 1v1. And Italy has kind of fallen off of yeah. uh, being in the top lane. Why is mm. that? Well, there's a lot of reasons why Nidalee hasn't been seen in the top lane. Because her, her laning phase generally is kind of land a spear, win the lane. Okay. That works much right. better against, against squishy champions, especially when she can get the blue yeah, buff and yeah. a bit of AP and start letting those spears hurt. Uh, and also, Bruiser Nidalee or the tank Nidalee fell off heavily when her Cougar form armored magic resist got stripped. Mm. That was uh, many patches ago. 
So it's actually not the Bruiser in Italy Inox is going for. He's going with the AP in Italy. And we got ganks on both sides of the map here. Yep, both lanes are seeing action. Cutie Pie could go down here, and he does. It hits him on the backside. Crepo is going to be falling in the exchange, and it looks like they're still chasing Whoa. Cruiser back to his turret. In the top lane, Crumbs oh. makes it out. Cruiser does not. And it looks like they're trading back and forth on either side. All said, though, this was much better for Evil Geniuses. Mm -hmm. They turned this gank around 2v3 and nearly got three kills, just got the one, whereas their gank in the other lane was not retaliated. So very good things by EG here. That's the fear that Dignitas had of the Leona. But let's take a look at this, mm -hmm. this other gank here. Looks like they had it. Had to yeah, use They the didn't even battery. land the spear. They get the assault and battery. And then they just had an ignite on and just brute force that tower dive. People often underestimate the cougar form burst for Nidalee once she hits level 6. And Inox put it all on Cruiser right there and was able to finish him off. Good thing he had that fiendish Kodak, Kodak's AP that he just bought. That's going to help him out a little bit there. As they back off the turret, goes down in their favor. EG starting to make a few moves back structurally against Dignitas. They've tied those up, have a 2,000 gold lead. It looks like they may have found themselves a Crepo. Ooh, and he doesn't even have his ultimate up. This is a dead Crepo. <laughs> yeah, level 6 Crepo going down. The team's not going to be able to use him for now, but they are oh, getting the dragon on get Dick's side. Ward down he, afterwards. Oh, Despite yeah. not having a teleport okay. on Cruiser, he was able to roam down. There's no turret for him to defend. Dignitas trying to go for this objective. And it doesn't look like EG can get in range to counterattack this one, Riv. Crepo looking to come back. He was a big part of being in that fight, so the team had to back off. You see the spear is starting to hurt. The Adam yeah. Unholy Grail is finished. Like you said, it's not an AP, or it's not a tank Nidalee. Yeah, this game got really interesting because Dignitas has seemed to outplay the objective game, but EG has made all the other moves properly. Right. I have to say, Pobelter's farm in the mid lane is spectacular, and really the turned around gank by Yellow Pete and Crepo really speaks volumes to how much stronger they can be in 2v2 and skirmish situations. And now that Inox has an Athene's Unholy Grail, uh, is just absolutely massive as far as trying to get some mid lane tower siege down. They won't be able to reach the turret too well. Uh, unless Scar runs out of mana, Slash gets a little bit low from Italy yeah. Spears. But, you know, they're actually looking to take some of these objectives back now. Since they have two squishy solo laners, and Cruiser still needs to farm up before he can start running at them. Yeah, he does not even have the Sunfire Cape in his inventory yet. We're still looking at just Sork Boots and the Spirit Gem. Looking onto Crumbs. He's making the shot calls, we have to remember. Coming from the other side, not too sure. Say it might be Snoopy. I know Crepo talks a lot for the bottom line of the team. Yeah, EG definitely has a small committee, probably a committee of two. Mm -hmm. It's Snoopy and Crepo who like calling the shots. They have actually complimented Inox and Pobelter for being vocal, but mostly on their ability to follow what they're saying and put in input when they see fit. Like if they disagree with something, they'll bring it up and then Snoopy or Pete or sorry, Crepo will make a an appropriate call. And looking at Dig, how they are doing in the big picture, usually it's Skara. They've got him a kill so far. He's on that Archangel staff, and he is starting to power up. He can carry this. Yeah, that is the squishiest Ziggs to play against <laughs> a Zed and Nidalee. He has almost no health. He has no resistances in that build. And if he gets hit by one spear or even just a nice shadow Q shot from Zed, he's going to have to basically fall away from the turret. It's a incredibly greedy power build by Scar, but what it gives him the ability to do, as you saw there, was one-shot that back wave with his Q. He's trying to keep himself strong in that. Looking down at Crepo, usually you see a Leona go for gold generation build, but there's none there, actually. No, that's not what Crepo believes in. He also thinks uh, that a Sightstone in itself is like gold per 10 because he was going to be buying mm -hmm. the wards anyway. So he puts much more emphasis on getting the Sightstone because that not only gives him better vision control early, it also gives him more resilience since Leona is one of the best scaling supports with health. It looks like that's exactly what he's trying to do. Yellow P, a lot of AD carries more or less, or even I guess everyone, you see a, a mana pot and crumbs is for mm -hmm. that, you know, throughout the fight, they need a little bit more mana. More people are picking up consumables. More juice. More juice. Yellow Pete going with a Bloodthirster straight away. The other Ezreal we saw in North America was actually Double Lift's attempt to revive the blue build Ezreal. Yeah. Uh, first off, he started with the wrong trinket, so mm. that wasn't good. But secondly, it just didn't work out in double lifts game. Surprisingly, I think that game was against Evil Geniuses. And they knew all about how that one didn't work. 
this it's time. It's almost like games are too going short for, for that expensive of a build now. Mm. In some often cases, times, yeah. Oftentimes. Right. Uh, it's it's more that the the tanks are getting to that point where they just run him down before he can yeah. actually get the Iceborne Gauntlet to to stop him. I think overall games have actually increased in time in Europe by about three minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, that was in an infographic I checked out earlier. <laughs> Inox looks like he gets the blue. That's going to help out, you know, EG. Try to get some siege potential. Pole Belter just gets mm. taken out under the turret. He, he didn't even see that coming. Yeah, so Dignitas seems to generally be in the right places at the right times, and their turret game is very strong right now. As I'm Cutie Pie was saying in the interview, he's not so much a carry on Jinx as he is a marksman who just kills turrets from range, which he's doing very well right now. Sure, he took an Ezreal off, but they're just getting more turret damage. Look at this. And what EG is doing is playing into the hands of Diggs. If, if Pole Belter can kill Skara as fast as it looks like, why send him to a different lane? Yeah, well, think about it. Once Pole Belter goes down, especially, they don't have wave clear from any sources. Unless Krepel yeah. goes all in, uh, Inox can't do much more than Spear, mm -hmm. and once the Ezreal ult is down, which Yellow Peak threw, it was at an angle with which it could not clear all the minions. Yeah. There was nothing to stop Dignitas from sieging through. It's a bit of a compositional weakness that EG has to make up for, that they have very poor ranged wave clear, which is interesting since they're playing a bit of a siege poke gong. All right, looks like Krepo is going to eat a few shots here. That would have been a very nice zap for a few more turret shots to scale up. 24.7 to 23.4. Dignitas has somewhat of a lead, and it's a good thing it's on Skara, as we were saying. You see that the Bloodthirster, like you said, being stacked up by I'm a Cutie Pie. Yep. He's ready to get those turrets taken down. Yeah, he's done his job taking down plenty of turrets so far. Skara, I wonder if he's going to go just for like a death cap with that Neely Sealard draw, because he hasn't actually had to look at Poe Belter much. I think he's mainly getting away with this. Uh, because Pobelter is a little bit distracted in other places right now. Hmm. You can see... I'm trying to figure out right here. EG... EG's going with a a bit of a switched up strategy right here. They put in okay. in the top lane to start the game. Uh, but now they're moving Pobelter to be in the split pusher. And they're going to try the siege with a blue, bo a blue buff in Ox. So therefore, Skara does not have to itemize armor because he's very rarely... Um, fighting with Zed. He's yeah. not seeing him at all in this game. Yeah, they're really turning Zed into the split pusher here in Inox the Sieger. Three to two in kills, as it looks like they're trying to force each other into something and raise that number a little bit here. Yeah, it's a pretty low kill, high objective game. Mm -hmm. Both teams have one more turret than kill, actually. And the siege should continue from EG, trying to take out this pink ward in the top. And every time Pobelter shoves in uh, side lane, he's actually rotating back to join the team. And if one thing is dangerous for a poke comp, it's doing Dragon without being able to get poked down. But Dignitas decides to just try and get more turrets because that's their focus. That was great placement by Evil Geniuses there. Dig was really right around mid huddled up. Oh, oh. Krepo throws down the solar flare, but he gets flame chopped. A great placement oh. by Cutie Pie. And it thwarts the it. turn. Cruiser's right in the middle of the fight with Teleport. Krepo's the focus, and he goes down as he's been putting that health on, but it's not enough. Bobelter's the final focus. No, Inox, Cruiser rather, going down as Inox finds that kill. Crumbs, he is ignited, but he is still going strong. The Repel goes up so he can follow. The Cocoon goes out, and Pobelter is already well out of range with Shadows. Really high level fight there. Just one for one on each side. Side. Man. So many skills dodged or barely missed by these guys. Everyone disengaging low, and Dignitas fearlessly continues for another turret. The Jack, you look at these teams, it's a skill shot party to be dodged, as you said. So hard for these guys to keep themselves in the right position. Cutie Pie losing a quarter of his health there. Yellow Peak goes down! Didn't even know what was happening behind the turret. And Cutie Pie, like he said, you get that, get excited, and it's over. Yeah, and he's in and out of that fight, no problem. 1-1-3 one, one, on him right now, trying to get a little bit more farmed on G. It's all about the long-range stuns uh, and finishes there from both sides. I mean, yeah. if a Nidalee Spear hits, it ends. If it isn't, the other way. Uh, and the reason that EG, I think, lost this fight is they tried to hard initiate without Inox landing any Spears. Even at mm -hmm. the start of the fight, you could see that one Spear went clean through uh, the entire Dignitas team. At that point, Cruiser's front line, despite dying, took up a lot of time from Dignitas. Uh, and right. Sorry, from EG. And it just allowed Dignitas to clean up the rest of that fight. Because no poke was landed by EG before the fight. A lot of people have been playing Nidalee lately. But it gets to that fight phase and you just see them jumping in. Kind of forgetting the way it should be played off in the Fog of War. Throwing the spears out. Yeah, they saw the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I think if 
Snoopy hadn't gotten caught in the Flame Chompers, and they could have taken out Amicutie Pie from the get-go, uh, they would have been able to win that fight. It was a close enough opportunity. If you right. think about Leona landing... That uh, was spot on. Spot on. And then if Krepo could have chained, that means that Inox would have landed the max rank yeah. spear, and it would have been a dead jinx. They get that single target focus. They have the long range from Krepo. We're seeing the gold be very or closed in here between both teams. It's only about 30k to 31. 5 to 3 in turrets. Super close, yeah. Uh, objectives have been very strong for Dignitas. Obviously, the wave clear of Ziggs, I think, is putting a lot of map pressure onto EG. Also, the attack speed with which Jinx can take down turrets has resulted in many positive things. But now it's all about Poe Belter's split pushing and Inox's spears. It surprisingly comes down to the bottom lanes. Look out. And a flash Timbers. There he goes. Yellow P is the last one in line, and he's taken down first. Yeah, well, look at these bottom lanes right now. It was just support on AD <laughs> carry, and Dignitas can continue this push up the top. Pobelter gets caught, split pushing, while his team gets initiated on it. He has to come back. This turret's going to take a lot of damage before EG can counterattack. Leona's coming in from the flank. Dig has everything they need here. Kurt or Krepo's just sitting off on the wing here in the fog of war, but he decides to not do anything. The team says hold off just now. The inhibitor turret falls, so they're now fighting they without go. that damage. They may want to try this one onto him. Oh, he gets him off the ducky. The alley oop on Scar and himself. He goes down. No, here comes the barrier in for Scara. Tries to take him down. 30 seconds on the clock there, but three fall instantly for EG on the return fire, and it's not what they wanted. Hey, we talked about the momentum that Dignitas might carry through from their previous win today against XDG, and we're just seeing the benefits of confidence for Dignitas right now. Now, they stayed in for the inhibitor. They knew that it was going to be a 4v5 regardless, and they were only down a few key spells. So when this fight is initiated, even though it's on to Skara, it is still a full 5v4. Skara gets off some decent damage. I mean, Cutie Pie is pretty much untouched in that fight. And since everyone was diving to the Ziggs once again without landing poke, it's a straight-up fight with a bunch of squishy champions against a team that has a strong tank and AoE, it's yeah. not going to end well for EG. That's something I've been looking at for the past few minutes here, is that strong tank. Where does that fall in line on EG's side? They don't have no, the don't HP have to stay in these fights no. for longer than the first round of spells. I mean, unless Snoopy were to get seven kills in the next fight, yeah. I don't think he's going to be turning into a tank anytime soon. That's generally why I think they picked Ezreal as well, is because Safety. I think game plan-wise, mm -hmm. Uh, the team comp is sound because they should be able to just kind of keep their distance, poke, and then let Krepo initiate when they want to. Right. But the problem is Dignitas is forcing EG to initiate by pushing turrets relentlessly and catching EG in some bad positions. And they're giving themselves the chance to do that. They went with the Talisman of Ascension. They have distortion boots on the anti-mobility. Mm -hmm. They want it over and over. And speaking of boots, that inhibitor would have been much easier to defend if Pobelter wasn't trying to skimp on his item build and had able to get home guard boost. Oh, crumbs. He actually... Oh, wait. He goes up. He's going to take that damage from the death mark. Oh. But it looks like they're trying to come into this one strong. Crumbs gets the kill over onto Yellow Peak. Krepo falls right after. They were wandering alone. Yeah, they had power in numbers, but Dignitas was ready to close in. Pretty good jukes by Poe Belter, but the third one lands. Oh, he's going to be forced to flash on that. He's got a shadow coming up. He doesn't throw it back. He throws it it's forward. A stun. Tries to get it on the stun. There's no slow to follow. Cruiser is just too sticky. Woo, he almost took out I'm a Cutie Pie in the back there <laughs> when Poe Belter was trying to get some stuff down. But that's another three kills by Dignitas. Everything and it, says yeah. forward drive. Mm. Scara still hasn't bought a defensive item. No, he doesn't need one right now because EG isn't able to get the right kind of team fights. Uh, this is going to be a last ditch effort for a steal. Snoopy's trying to go in 1v5. I think if he doesn't steal this Baron, the game is over. There's a good amount of damage coming in. They don't have the Zig, so they can't Ooh. throw in the bomb. No, it does go over to Crumbs. A very nice job. Low on Snoopy. Sometimes you just got to try. Got to hand it to him. The timing of that Baron entrance was awesome, considering he did it all by himself. And surprisingly, Dignitas didn't decide to peel away. Obviously, Crumbs can secure that by himself if he times the smite with his spider bite as well as possible, since there is an execute mm -hmm. tied to that Elise melee queue. Uh, just more confidence from Dignitas coming through once again. 
The game progresses on here. Dragon going over to EG as we see a few sweepers being pulled out. So this becomes a bit easier. They have the ward coverage all over Dragon. And this is what they need. If Dig is going to give them these little steps, mm -hmm. they have to take it. Hey, this is a great Dragon sneak by EG. Mm -hmm. It gives them a huge amount of gold. But I still think their base is somewhat indefensible. <laughs> Dignitas, even though it's only 25 minutes in. Looking grim. A little sad about yeah. this dragon, but the overall context of the game is just looking great for them. Fiendish Codex right onto Kiwi Kid. You know, it's never good when the ability power support can start actually building the damage they need. Uh. Aegis of the Legion onto Crepo, thinking about the team, trying to be a good guy, and we see the Triforce almost being built up on Yellow Pete. Yeah. But in comparison, he is far behind on that ADC. Yeah, every everybody is generally far behind on EG right now. Right. Uh, the one person who has a decent amount of gold is Inox. 9,000 to actually 8,500 mm -hmm. of Cruiser. Once again, EG wasn't too far off in a lot of these cases. If they could have landed a few more Natalie Spears, and if Dignitas wasn't so damn decisive about where they were going, EG could have fought some of this back. But really, so far, all credit for Dignitas to, first off, Skara for not having to build a Seeker's Arm Guard against Crazy. a mid lane Zed. And then just again to I'm a Cutie Pie, who fourth game in a row has had a successful game on Jinx with his new support in Kiwi Kid, who is again performing exceptionally. Let's see how easily uh, they can push down this turret. Again, they've avoided most of the poke, and they're already on the turret. So if EG wanted to stop it, they would have to do a hard initiation, which is just, they've, they've done it too many times to try it again. Such a stressful thing to be ticking against you, knowing you have to watch these structures go down just to have a better chance at the next one. Yeah. Well, at least they'll have a turret defending. Yeah this next one. So Dignitas now can play off the ball. Minions are going to be coming down mid. There are 27 minutes into this game and something this season Dignitas has shown is being more definitive. At this part of the, part of the game, usually both teams are running back and forth trying to figure out what to do. Well, if we remember last season, Dignitas would win games just by being really far ahead and in close games, they wouldn't be able to finish. But that's mm -hmm. because everyone was just kind of putting in their two cents. Whoa! There's, few, Whoa. there's 50 cents right there. Yeah, that's a... Uh, there's Good half. contribution by Inox <laughs> to Dignitas' plans right there. Nice guy. But this season, with Crumbs being the one making the calls, yes or no? Mm. That One person's not going to disagree with himself, so they're generally going to be <laughs> doing the right things. Well, the right things have led to 4-0 and 7 on Crumbs, 4-1 and 6 on Skara, and even Cutie Pie still only dying once on what is now his jinx as Dignitas comes around to pick some hands. The oh-so-great ultimate flash initiation on Tibbers. All the health bars, Snoopy, Crepo going down so quickly. Pole Belcher's being focused. Cruiser tanks the turret first. It worked beautifully for the team, and the dive continues back towards the fountain. A kill coming out, however, onto Crumbs. He goes down valiantly for the team, but it's a clean ace, Jack. Triple kill comes in at the end for Scar. That's the decisive initiation. Kiwi Kid leading the charge with the Flash Tibbers and everybody else fearlessly following up. Dignitas has got themselves a pretty fast new car. They've been in the driver's seat for the past four games. And it doesn't look like they're stopping anytime soon. A win here over Evil Geniuses gives them another win in the column. Dignitas going to try and carry this one as far as they can.